G'day gang, Twitch here from Creep Designs. Today I am bringing you another challenge straight off the back of the challenge because who needs sleep? Today's challenge is called the Great Aussie Challenge and it's hosted by Fiona at Flipping Side Hustle. I'll put the link to her channel in the description along with the link to the full playlist for the challenge. So the goal for this challenge is to use Australian made and owned products. The original plan was also to utilize products from, or items from Kmart as well, because as Aussies, we love Kmart. Um, I don't know about anyone else, but when I'm out in public and I'm having an anxiety attack, I make a beeline straight to Kmart and I'll walk in there and I'm like, okay, what do I need? <laughs> I won't actually go in there needing anything, I'll just be like, I'm having an anxiety attack, I want to go buy stuff that I don't need. So I'll look for stuff. Anyway, I digress. Uh, but apparently that plan was scrapped and I was not aware of it, so now I've scrapped my design for this and I'm going to be doing something a lot simpler, which works for me because when I went looking for this piece, I'd completely lost track of time and uh, I didn't forget that I had this challenge to do, but I had no idea how close it was to the due date. Um, so I went on Facebook Marketplace and Gumtree to see what I could find. I couldn't find anything, and the only piece, please, blah, 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 the only pieces I could find that were small-ish and in decent condition, um, people literally just wouldn't reply to my messages. Uh, I found this one and it looked a hell of a lot smaller in the photos that the seller put up. Uh, it is huge. There weren't any dimensions in the description. The only thing I asked was, are the drawers on metal runners? And they are. So that's at least a win and it's a fairly straightforward piece. So if I keep it simple, that's not what I'm good at. I'm not good at keeping things simple. Um, so I'll keep it as simple as I am capable of doing. Oi, Matt! Where's the bug spray? It ran away before I could get it. Uh, for those that don't know, I live in Queensland, Australia, and we get a lot of cockroaches here. So I start this project the same way I start every project, by pulling it apart and removing anything that's not being kept. I'm going to keep these handles, but they are not right for this project and I'll put them aside and use them for something else. I already knew that the top on this was not hardwood because the bulk of this, apart from the draw sides and some of the frame, is made of MDF. And I was hoping that the draw fronts might be wood, but they are not. Going over the entire piece now, inside and out, including the drawers, with cuts and really clean cut mixed in some warm water. After going over everything with the clean cut, I then went in with a clean rag and just some clean cool water and here I'm just using my carbide scraper to just scrape off some gunk. I don't know what it was, it was just gunky stuff. I usually like to make an insert for the drawers, um, a removable draw liner, but the drawers on this set were in really good condition so I just cleaned them up and left them as they were. Give your runners a really good clean too because you don't realise how filthy they can get and just giving them a good clean can help them run so much smoother. Now that we're all clean, I'm giving the entire piece a scuff sand with my Cartamelli Prep Mate 2 Orbital Sander and I'm using 120 grit sandpaper. This 
factory finish on it had a very plasticky feel to it like it wasn't super shiny but it was still glossier than I wanted it to be Now I'm going to be going over the entire piece with my Cartamelli Boutique Primer and Adhesive Bond. I didn't really need to use the primer for any stain blocking or anything like that or to prepare for a white base, uh, for a white paint because I wasn't planning on using white on this. Uh, I'm also using it this time for its Adhesive Bond properties. Because, like I said, this is a very plasticky finish and I just wanted to make sure it was really going to stick. So, whilst you watch me do the very boring task of painting white, I'm going to take this opportunity to discuss with you something that was brought up with me recently. So, apparently there is a misconception out there that chalk paint is only for a shabby chic finish. Not true at all. Um, most of the finishes that I do on my pieces are smooth finishes and solid. I do a lot of distressing as well, but I also do a lot of smooth finishes that aren't distressed at all and they have a solid finish on them. So you can easily use the same chalk paint that you use to get a shabby chic or a really rustic distressed finish to also do a really sleek, smooth contemporary I guess finish with no distressing, no shabby chicness and all of that jazz. Um, that's the great thing about chalk paint, it is very versatile and the finish that you get purely will come down to how you use the paint. So I hope that clears some things up for some of you, I hope that didn't sound too much like a lecture, I just wanted to get it out and sometimes my words get jumbled up and I needed to try and get it all out in one piece. All right, so now I'm using Cartamelli Boutique Mineral Paint in the color Wool Shed. I have decided to do a two-tone effect on this set of drawers. It seems to be a popular look at the moment. So I knew that I wanted the line to be kind of halfway down one of the drawers and I couldn't work out whether to go down, like do a dip down in the middle of the side or to go straight across or to go on an angle straight up or straight down. 
um, but yeah, I ended up just cutting straight across and doing a straight line, as you'll see. So this is Carts and Millie Boutique Mineral Paint in the colour 3 Ducks. Absolutely gorgeous colour, I really wanted to use it on this piece. I also knew that I had enough of this to make sure I had enough to get the whole piece done. But it's not going to stay this colour. Alright, so after having put down my first coat of these two colours together, so Woolshed and Three Ducks, I have looked at it a few times and I'm an art about it and gone back and forth and decided that I didn't like that combination for the look I was going for and have changed it. You might recognise this from a previous video. So that's the new colour combination. So there's a bit more of a contrast than I was originally going for, but that's still pretty good. I'm still happy with that. Or am I? I'm still not sure. And so my plan is to do a straight line all the way around, but before whipping out my tape and getting all finicky with things, I wanted to nail down where I wanted my tide line to be. So I just did a rough line all the way around and then I'll go from there. Whilst we're here, can we just take a moment to really appreciate how well this suffused paint covers a lighter colour, like it's a fair bit lighter and just look at how well that goes over. So now that I've got my measurements on there, I'm using some sleek tape to mark my line. The little grooves in the sides were a bit hard to get into. Uh, I tried using a pen, I think it was, but I ended up using the end of a brush to get in there. Just kind of need to find something that's the right shape that'll get in there without tearing or cutting the tape. But I got there in the end. Now I'm taking all of my drawers out again so that I can paint the parts that sit behind the drawer edges. When I do this, I lay the drawers out in the order that they go back in. They are numbered, but this helps me remember. 
So I'm just smooth sanding the edges where I've painted, putting some tape in place where the line needs to be, and just doing the same thing I did on the outside basically. So I'm painting the back of the drawer fronts as well. I'm not being as finicky and perfect with these parts because they really won't be seen. I just didn't want them to be super obvious sun damaged yellow. So by this point I have smooth sanded everything after getting one full coat on the entire piece. So smooth sanded and then so now I'm going in with a second coat of everything. The weather had warmed up by this point so I'm using my misting bottle to help both paints glide on a bit easier otherwise you can get a bit of drag because the paint like in our weather especially uh, the paint can dry out faster than you can work it, if that makes sense. Anywho. So I want to smooth sand everything again, but I don't want to risk taking any of the paint off. So I'm actually taking my 600 grit sandpaper and flipping it around. So I'm using the back of it to smooth everything and get the get the paint super smooth ready for the top coat you can also use a brown paper bag or something similar to do this or you can just use your fine grit sandpaper and you know go about your business so just like when i'm doing any kind of sanding even with a power sander i run my hand over the surface with one hand whilst i'm sanding with the other hand so i'm checking as i go to get it super smooth I'm going to have a go at rolling the top coat onto this piece instead of brushing it on like I usually do. So I've got my top coat in my tray, I'll probably have to put a bit more in there. Um, and I'm using a Unipro 5mm nap for a smooth satin and gloss. So we'll see how this goes. It'll probably suck. Like I've said, this was my first time rolling my top coat on, so I am pretty new to rolling altogether. So probably best to get your advice for rolling from someone else for now. But my technique for this is basically get the top coat on, all the paint, get it on, make sure I get good coverage, and then lighten my pressure on the roller to finish it off and finish going in the one direction. Alright, the top is drying nice and smooth, I'm actually really happy with that. I'll probably do a second coat on the top of that, it, the mineral coat, da, 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 the mineral paint, boutique mineral paint has a built-in top coat, so I don't really need to do too many coats on this, but as things will be going on top of it most likely, I will do a second coat just for extra protection but I'm only gonna do one coat on the sides and draw fronts, maybe, we'll see. Um, 
not as thrilled with how it's rolled on the sides. Oh, it's getting better as it dries, but like it's kind of, yeah, I think I might brush the sides, see how I go. So because of how smooth the top coat came out on the top of the drawers using the roller, I decided that rolling top coat on flat surfaces is now going to be my thing. Uh, turned out just as amazing on the drawer fronts. And then once I was done rolling the drawer fronts, I waited for that to dry and then went in with a brush and did the drawer edges. Alright, so we're on the home stretch now, but the screws for the handles were a bit too short, so I've just got a bigger drill bit, slightly bigger than the size of the head of the screws, so that it can be inset. So here is my confession. The main reason for the two-tone drawers is because I wanted to use these handles here that are from Sleep Brushes Australia. But I only had six of them, so I decided to use six on the bottom drawers and then get some of these ones from Kmart for $7 for a pack of two and use these on the top drawers. And I thought doing a two tone effect would make more sense of that, and for me, I feel it has worked out perfectly. And here it is. I was skeptical about how it was going to turn out but I am absolutely thrilled with it it is just absolutely amazing I love it before I finish up I just want to say thank you to Fiona for hosting this amazing challenge it has been great even if I was doing a rush job towards the end make sure you watch every video in the playlist and remember to subscribe to every channel because we all appreciate it so here is the before shot in case you forgot what it looked like and here it is now, all fresh and looking good. If you're new to my channel please remember to subscribe so that you don't miss future projects and I will see you guys on the next one. G'day gang.